Hey everybody, so I'm here to share some interesting uh, information about the country of South Africa and the rampant corruption down there. First of all, um, there's a family with the last name Gupta. Uh, they pretty much run South Africa now and they're not even from there. They moved there in 1993 from India and they've become very wealthy with cult while cultivating their ties to uh, government officials and their family members. Um, a few examples of some of the companies that have gotten in trouble uh, with their ties to the Guptas. A UK public relations firm named Bell Pottinger, their UK branch collapsed after Bell Pottinger was hired by the Guptas to discredit Zuma rivals. Again, the current president of South Africa is Jacob Zuma. He became president in 2009. And so the Guptas hired this public relations firm to spread all kinds of nasty uh, information about the rivals of Zuma, through, a lot of it through social media. Um, SAP, the software firm, and McKinsey, uh, the uh, consultancy based out of New York, uh, they've both put employees on leave for some uh, shady dealings that have happened with the Guptas. K KPMG uh, is, they, they basically fired all their South Africa staff because of auditing problems. There's been a lot of uh, phony, a lot of fraud going on there. Now after, okay, now the Guptas moved to South Africa in 1993 and as um, Jacob Zuma became president in 2009, shortly after he became president, Two of, uh, first of all, Zuma has 20 kids with multiple wives. Two of his kids are twins, and they were uh, appointed to the board of directors of Sahara, which is a Gupta-owned computer firm. Now, also, Gupta, uh, they started a 24-hour news channel known as ANN7, and they do nothing but uh, spread positive messages about Jacob Zuma. A few other things. Um, one thing, uh, they had a very, the Guptas had a very lavish wedding where millions of dollars were spent. The money to pay for that wedding flowed from a provincial government outside uh, the capital in Johannesburg. That money flowed from a provincial government to a dairy farm for poor people and then flowed to several accounts owned by the Gup Guptas in Dubai and then the money came back to South Africa. I guess that was their way of laundering money. Um, also, in 2015, SAP signed a contract with a subsidiary of the Sahara Group. It's a 3D printing company. And the deal was that the contract promised the Sahara subsidiary a 10% commission if uh, a state-owned railroad and port operator signed a software contract with SAP for $7.3 million. Another example of how the Guptas are using connections to the Zuma family uh, to further its uh, businesses. Um, the finance ministry started investigating the Gupta deals, and then the then deputy defense or deputy finance minister, known as his name is Jonas, he went to the Guptas mansion to discuss the investigation, and then in, the Guptas then offered him the position of to be the head finance minister, another step up, plus forty four million dollars in bribes. Um, well, it's kind of interesting to me, first of all, that the Guptas can offer a top uh, minister job when, I mean, they're not in the government, but they, they do run the government. Um, Jonas did say he turned down the bribes, but in return, the Guptas wanted, one of the things they wanted, what uh, they told Jonas is that they wanted a 33% increase in government contract income. Now, again... President Zuma's son, Dudu Zane, is the co-owner of multiple Gupta businesses. Um, one of the things that uh, the 
Dudu Zane Zuma and the Guptas did together was buy a house for the youngest wife of President Zuma. Um, and then in return, the president, uh, he has promoted government officials that ha are, have close ties to the Zumas, or to the Guptas. Um, another example of corruption. Uh, the Guptas paid the luxury hotel bill of the former chief of the utility there, and in return, the utility reduced a fine for a coal mine that's co-owned by Dudu Zane Zuma and the Guptas. Um, also, but, but now the Guptas, the banks in South Africa are clamping down finally. The majority of them have shut down and closed accounts owned by the Guptas, and pretty much there's one bank left which is the Bank of Baroda, that's the South African branch of an Indian bank. So far, uh, they haven't closed the account yet. It's looking like there's a good possibility they will. If that account closes, that'll pretty much put a stranglehold on the Guptas to doing business in South Africa, and it'll pretty much cause them to collapse. Uh, so I hope that does get shut down because these guys are just uh, pretty much running South Africa into the ground. So, anyways, just a little points thought you probably haven't heard about yet.